There we go. Now I've got us recording. So welcome everybody to the webinar. Um, I've got Justin. Ron Justin, tell me how I pronounce your last name so I don't slide. Uh, it's, it's Justin Rondo. Rondo. Okay. Justin Rondo on the line here to uh, tell us how we can improve our social strategy. Let me share a couple of Affiliate Summit pointers before we get started today. Um, I will go over this rather quickly. As a thank you for joining this webinar, Affiliate Summit will be giving you a 10% discount code to Affiliate Summit West 2012. That will be taking place January 8th through the 10th in the beautiful Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. And this 10% discount, discount code is good for new registrations only and you can see the prices for the different passes on the screen before you. Um, we have the silver pass at $249 currently and the gold pass at $549. Platinum pass is at $1,249 and the diamond pass is at $2,249. You can go to AffiliateSummit.com and click on the registration, big yellow registration button to find out more information on the pass types. In addition to that, Affiliate Summit is doing the uh, race to Affiliate Summit West 2012 again. And this is a daily mile challenge where Affiliate Summit will donate $1 for each mile that you run, cycle, swim, walk, anything that you do exercise-wise and that you put in on daily mile. They're going to do donate a dollar to Avon Walk for Breast Cancer in support of the Affiliate Marketers Give Back. So you can go to the link you see before you, which is affiliatesummit.com backslash race, race hyphen to hyphen affiliate hyphen summit hyphen west hyphen 2012. Well, that's a long link. But check that out and see if you can join. The, the more people on, the more money we can donate. Um, also, but if you want to enter the sweepstakes before December 1st, you could win a gold pass to Affiliate Summit West 2012 because Affiliate Summit is giving away 50 free passes this year. So I would head on over to the link you see on um, bullet number four there and try to get into that sweepstakes as soon as possible if you have not already bought your ticket. Um, and lastly, the Affiliate Summit webinar program is in full swing, and we are trying to have one every single week leading up to Affiliate Summit West 2012, and we do have one next week with the wonderful Wade Tonkin of Fanatics, and it is Avoid Rejection, a crash course on how to get into the affiliate programs you want to work with, and it's going to take place on November 23rd at 3.30 p.m., so head on over to GoToMeeting and register today. If you would like to tweet about this webinar, tweet with the hashtag AFSOMWebinar. And also, um, well, that, that's all the notes I have for Affiliate Summit, but let me introduce Justin to you. Justin um, comes from a background in philosophy, and he is currently directing social media strategy and email marketing for Template Zone and its suite of services, including high impact designer. His ex expertise on landing pages and Facebook page layouts was instrumental in shifting the product mix offered by Template Zone, in addition to setting a new course for the company's marketing and branding. So Justin has quite a bit of experience in social media. So Justin, I'm going to pass this over to you and let you teach us how to increase our brand. All right, great, thanks. Just get everything set up for you. I will show my screen. Also, um, I didn't make I didn't mention this, but we are recording this um, webinar, and we will be posting it on the YouTube Affiliate Summit channel as well as the blog. And when I send out the ten percent discount code, I will send out a link to find this recorded version. So if you want, you know, you don't have to sit here and try to take a bunch of notes. You can you can find the recorded version later. Um, I think that's all. Go ahead. All right, great. Um, I first want to thank everybody for coming today. Um, I know everybody has a pretty busy schedule, and to have a, a midday meeting can um, can be a little bit of a, a little bit taxing. But uh, so, thank you for coming to my uh, my session, Socialize Your Brand: uh, Actionable Tips to Improve Your Social Strategy. Again, I'm Justin Rondo, and I'm the director of marketing here at uh, at Template Zone. Um, on Twitter, you can hashtag this. You can also tweet at me at, at JT Rondo. And um, let's let's just get started here.
All right. So I think the first thing uh, everybody needs to understand is that social media is much more than just Facebook and Twitter. Um, though those are really kind of the two mainstays, uh, it's, that's very important to note. And I just kind of want to explain a little bit about how, uh, how much social media can, can encompass. And you have uh, different blogs and community boards. Uh, I mean, at High Impact Designer, we have our, uh, have our blog, which we, uh, we update almost daily with, uh, with new information about uh, social media, email marketing. Uh, and landing pages, and this is a great way for um, for your company to kind of show your expertise, uh, get some more keywords put in um, uh, during during searches, kind of increase traffic to your website, increase awareness, and really become a resource to your customers. Um, people are really looking for more than just a, they're looking for more whys rather than just how to fix things. So uh, really start kind of giving them giving them solutions that they can use. Uh, some other types of social media um, outlets are uh, Q&A sites and, uh, and forums. Forums are really kind of the oldest form of social media, and those actually are great ways to, um, to find new people within your market, try and reach out to uh, some people that you may have missed. And so you can do some pretty good Google searches in terms of uh, people searching on different forums for, uh, for information that fits within, uh, with, within your niche. Uh, some other Q&A sites, which are great, you have uh, Cura.com, uh, which is all user-generated content of asking questions and answering, um, answering these questions. Uh, I'm pretty active on there. I definitely recommend doing that for, for, your, for either yourself as a personal brand or for your company. And then um, there's also LinkedIn question and answers, which have a, a really cool uh, effect uh, where you can set up a set of questions, people answer them, and then they, will, uh, they have some, some time to either refine their their answers or uh, or for more people to come in and answer them themselves, and then you as the question asker get to rate people on who had the best question, I mean, well, the best answer to your question, which is um, a real mainstay in social media. You people are looking for interaction, and so things like uh, LinkedIn questions uh, is a great way to interact with people within uh, within your industry. Yahoo Answers is another one, but that one really isn't the best. Um, you don't really need to have a whole whole lot of uh, of cloud to be there, and I don't mean cloud isn't like the 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 influence rating. I just in terms of just the the word proper. So some other types of social media uh, mediums would be news and bookmark aggregators uh, like Delicious. You can see what people are bookmarking, what they find interesting. Uh, knowing your market and using social media to figure out your market is a uh, is really an um, amazing tool. I mean, you're, you're not spending as much money on test markets anymore. You're seeing what, what the masses are doing, and you're seeing it generally for free. Uh, there's just so much to understand, and we'll go into to a, a little bit more in depth a little bit later. Other sites are Dig, which isn't as prominent anymore. Uh, Dig had a, had a bit of controversy about last year, probably around last September, actually, where they um, weren't... Uh, they had done a site deep redesign that really kind of took away features, and there was a backlash, and they just ignored it, which really started to show that social media should be taken seriously by companies uh, because people are looking for, for answers to their questions or answers to their complaints, and they want them a lot faster than they used to. So keep that in mind. And Reddit is another great one, um, even though that's more for on the personal side. All right. So... With all this stuff, with all these different social media uh, mediums, like between Facebook, Twitter, blogs, news aggregators, uh, Q and A's, forums, all these things, you need to remember this: do not spread yourself too thin. You really have to think divide and conquer if you're going to be successful on on social media. If it's in some cases, I'd like to advise people: if you're new to, if you're designing a social strategy and you're having like a Facebook page and a Twitter page and you're trying to build those up, you should pick one, get some success there, get the ball rolling, then move on to another once, you kinda, once you've had some sort of success in one area. I would much rather see no Facebook page than a, a Facebook page that is poorly done and, and the same for Twitter. All right, so you want to go social. This graph right here represents the uh, the amount of time spent on in the U.S., and if you can't see it that well, that, that line that's growing very, very quickly around the end uh, between quarters is Facebook.com. Notice how much time people spend online. It's 
nearly 16.5 percent in Q3 of 2011 of time spent online is on Facebook. That is a marketer's dream. People are there. They're attentive. So you just have to find a way to, to reach these people. So Facebook is nearing 800 million users, if, if, not, if, if it hasn't surpassed it already, which would even show that my information might be dated. And social media um, is growing so quickly, and the, the tactics are growing, and just uh, all these statistics are coming out that it's, it's just a very, very uh, fast flow of information. And as I said, it also dominates user time spent online. So if you're questioning whether you should be on Facebook or on Twitter or using social media, don't question really anymore. And I think really for the remainder of, of this webinar, I'm going to focus a lot on, on Facebook tactics because I'm going to take my own advice and uh, think, you know, divide and conquer. And so let's focus on Facebook and some of the best tactics you can, you can use there as well. And I also want to mention that you can ask questions. Uh, Mary will be able to answer some. And uh, around the end, we're going to have a Q&A. So please be sure to, uh, to have some questions ready. That'd be great. So warning. If you're going to start a social, uh, a social media plan and be active on social, don't start on Facebook unless you have created these type of goals. So remember, let's talk about Facebook still. You need clear goals, you need measurable goals, and you need realistic goals. All of these three are necessary to be successful on Facebook. If you don't have goals one, you're not going to know what to measure or what even to look for. You need to have a reason to do something. If you're doing this for a company, if you're self-employed, you have to answer to yourself. But if you're doing this uh, for 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 your for your boss, you need to answer to him and have some have some metrics to go by and have some goals to actually re reach. So you have to make those as clear as day for either your boss or yourself. And then you have to be able to really defend that you've meet that you're meeting these goals. And realistic is just I think self-explanatory. If I started a um, a Facebook page two weeks ago and I said Oh, I want to be able to, to increase my revenue by the end of by the end of this quarter. That actually increase it by you know maybe maybe a couple couple thousand dollars. Like I, I want that much more revenue just for my Facebook page that I can measure. That's actually not the most realistic goal. What you do get from Facebook is a long term uh, a long term lead generation. You're you're widening your funnel, and you're getting uh, just more more people in there to be aware about your aware of your brand, and we're going to talk about different tactics you can have to turn these likes into actual marketable leads. All right, first things first, designs are critical on Facebook. This is your first impression, and you really have to make your impact. So look how these stand out, and I'm just going to go through kind of the, the, the good things about each of these pages. All right, we have, uh, we have the Angry Birds page. I mean, very simple, um, above the fold. One thing you don't have to really worry about with Facebook pages is uh, keeping things above the fold. Obviously, keep your call to action above there, but normally the button you're trying to get them to hit is that like button, which is right at the top. So they already know where they have to hit their what, where the button is they have to hit. But if you have more content you want to share with people, it's a uh, it's not a bad practice to go below the fold because the vertical orientation of Facebook users um, is is very uh, very common due to these sidebars, especially on the left. Uh, and based on how they're looking at things with their with their personal accounts, and so this looks great. It has the arrow pointing up, has the, the visual cue, has a clear call to action, and just keeps the same old Facebook uh, Facebook feel to it. But also uses color schemes that are uh, that are breaking kind of the, the Facebook blue and white. They're using the greens, the oranges, and really starting to uh, to break out and give it its own personality. Uh, this is actually uh, one of our old Facebook pages uh, at High Impact Designer. We just kind of jump out, uh, tell you to like us. There's no like button there because I obviously already liked it. Um, and that was just kind of a shameless self-plug, so sorry about that right there. But you should definitely check our Facebook page out. If you want a Facebook page audit, just fill in your information there, You'll, and we'll send you one over. Um, this is Red Bull's old Facebook page. And this, is, this one was their Facebook landing tab for probably over a year and a half and it's just looked really great look in the background how it teases different pieces of content behind an, an, an opa behind that opacity you have all these arrows pointing right where the like button is and it's important to note that the like button where it is is not static it's based on the size of your name so if you're creating this sort of uh, 
this sort of design where arrows are pointing directly at something, remember that the like button will be moving based on how, how long your, uh, your company name is. All right, so uh, we can move on. And they also have you know, the Red Bull logo, and I'm not partial to having a logo being that small or just your actual logo, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in creating pages. Uh, you have the Coca-Cola page. They did a really interesting thing with their arrow where they just uh, had it uh, pointing, pointing to the right uh, rather than having to worry about actually having something line up like Red Bull did. They uh, have it just kind of pointing off somewhere even though it does point pretty well. And they have some, uh, some nice, very nice look. Again, has uh, some contrasting colors with the reds in there the, since their, uh, their brand is that red color. It's, it's obviously something that people can see really easy. And look at that light count down there. And it is an interesting story about the Coca-Cola page. It was actually created by, um, by fans, and then Coca-Cola ended up taking it over. And then we have this page. This is uh, Bose's page, and they don't really get the picture. One, main, uh, one of the first mistakes they make is the first page you land on is actually their wall, even if you're, uh, when you're not a fan. Whenever you fan a page, you always land on the wall. But their first impression to somebody who's just landed on their page is just a, a bunch of comments from people. Then I went to their only, uh, their only FBML page, and they're actually going to have to change this because Facebook is getting rid of all, uh, all FBML pages, I believe, sometime early in uh, 2012. So if you're hosting those, it's not the best thing to have still. You're going to be wanting uh, putting things through iframes. And um, Bose really just doesn't get the picture. It's just a bunch of text. There's no call to action. Um, they're really lucky that they have such a, a, a established brand. And speaking of established brands, what did all of the previous pages have in common except for my shameless plug page? I'll tell you. They are all established brands. And since Facebook and social media has been thought to be one of the best ways for companies to, or small businesses to market at a, at a very inexpensive level. It's really interesting to see that really the most successful people on these uh, pages are these established brands. So I think um, people need to keep in mind that if they're going to compete on Facebook, if you're not an established brand at all, uh, you need to have all these tools ready. You need to be able to create great designs. You need to engage with your fans. You need to know how to update your pages and actually bring people to you. Um, I mean, some, some interesting facts about pages. You, uh, people who visit your page are worried about being bombarded with messages or ads, so you want to be very frugal when you're posting. And I'll give you some more tips about those in a little bit. Uh, this is an interesting statistic. 90% uh, of the fans that visit your page and actually like it never actually return. Social media is really about community. You need to have a great looking and persuasive landing tab to turn your unique visitors into fans so you can get the chance to turn these fans into actual leads and then possibly customers. Designs are the first and most crucial step to reap the benefits of Facebook. Again, I can't stress this enough. 90% of your fans will never return and only interact with your page through status updates. You need to make your impact. So let's go over what, what I refer to as the fan cycle and social reach. A fan visits your page, whether it be organically or through a Facebook ad. A fan likes that page. They then interact with it. Uh, say if you, through one of your status updates, you say, who likes coffee? And they go, I love coffee. Uh, that person's now interacting with your page. And that, I love coffee, goes through the, into their news feed, which their friends see. And people within that fan's network see that activity. And they're wondering, well, why, why, does, uh, why does Joe like coffee so much? And why, why is he telling this, this brand that? The fan's friend whose interest is piqued will visit the page. And then you repeat steps two through four. You get the new visitor, and then they like, and they go through this whole process. All right, so that's a bigger version of it. So. And if, if a fan shows up either organically or through a paid ad, your default landing tab, the design of it, generates the micro conversion for you. That's what's going to get you the like. So if you're not an established brand and you're a small business or um, startup or entrepreneur on Facebook, you're going to need to have a 
default a default page that will generate a micro conversion, and that's what I refer to. Um, and likes are what I refer to as micro conversions. So then you turn community, you use community building to start turning likes into leads, and then leads into conversions. And a really great way to turn these likes into leads is to kind of leave breadcrumbs along the way. Uh, in our case, what we do is we have a landing tab that says like us to get a free a free Facebook page audit. They like the page. Now they're able to fill in their information into a form, uh, asking you know what's your name, what's your email, what sort of company are you do you work for, and why should you get this? Why should you get this audit? And then now we're starting to get more information that we weren't able to get just from that like. You're able to really start to um, use the power of Facebook and start to get more emails and then start turning them into sales. So crafting a page. First and foremost, this is extremely important. You need fan-gated content. Either fan-gated or like-gated, those are the two terms you'll hear the most. Um, but fan-gated content is, uh, is crucial. A fan-gated fan content is when you land on, say you land on a page and it says, like this page to get a free white paper. And then you click the like button and that page is refreshed and it serves you up with the information to get uh, that white paper, whether it be through a signing up into a form or from a link. But you hide all that information, you hide all the capabilities to get that white paper until you actually get that, that like button clicked. Um, a good practice is for all your pages uh, that you're adding is to have them all be fan gated so you can give people more of an incentive if they actually decide to click through your uh, your tab bar over here. And it's actually interesting that's still called a tab bar because it doesn't look like tabs at all anymore. Um, Facebook did have a recent update where people do not have to like your page in order to write on your wall. Uh, so people can interact there but that's not the first place and if, and if you have people landing on your wall and that's the first place they see, they already don't have to uh, like your page to get into any sort of conversation with you. So always make sure to change your default landing page. You want to have a clear call to action um, on there, you know, like like us for a white paper, and then the incentive to act. So I, I did a joint webinar uh, a while back uh, looking about, looking at the consistency of designs from emails, landing pages, websites, and Facebook, and how you have to have you know, similar color themes. You really want to bring people along and have the experience be, um, be holistic. So this is this company Paracone's landing tab that I hit when they were doing a skin-saving sweepstakes. Um, the mailer represented really the same color scheme, a little bit different, but it uh, was a really much, very much the same experience. And just look at how many tabs Paracone has. They have all this different stuff for you to do on their page. And granted, only 10% of their fan base probably returns to their page to, to see these things. They're still giving them plenty to look at and plenty to engage with. Though, more often than not, the people will just continue to go to the wall right here and comment on things or, in general, just like status updates within their own feed. It's really no wonder why they have 22,000 fans. I mean, this is another one of their pages. It just looks great. Uh, another one. All right, so there's different tools to create landing tabs. And a really interesting um, statistic just came out that uh, Facebook page creation tools uh, actually outgrow usage by all other applications on Facebook. For instance, um, this, this one free tool, the static HTML tool, gets um, a daily active users of about 5,600,000 people and has a monthly active user base of 72,200,000 people. And that's from uh, Facebook's own statistics and they have a weekly growth rate of about 9 million. And all this is doing is you're just putting HTML right in there and it publishes it. I mean, it does require some work to do it, like in terms of you know, actually creating the HTML and doing the designs, but it's a great way to publish it if you don't want to go through Facebook developers. Granted, it's, um, it's a bit of a limited tool. But just the fact that these type of tools, like page creation tools, far outgrow all other applications shows how necessary it is as a business and as or as an entrepreneur on Facebook to actually be thinking about your landing tabs and your the experience of your users. We have some other paid tools right here. Um, we have our social page builder tool, uh, which if 
anybody emails me after this, I'm more than willing to give a 50% a, a off their first month if they want to try it out. Uh, you're more than welcome to do that. I just want to give back to anybody taking the time out of their day today. Uh, so please do that. All right, so you need to increase traffic to your Facebook page. I mean, I've been talking about community. I've been talking about uh, engagement. But if you're not getting any sort of traffic, then what's the point of being on Facebook? So here are some ways to increase traffic to your site. So we have Facebook ads. And Facebook ads are a really inexpensive way to get some new people and get some new traffic. Um, they're also a very accurate way to target your audience. It's unbelievable and almost kind of scary how well you can target people. You can start targeting people who are following your, your competitors, trying to get some more, uh, get some more of their, steal some of their business if you want to look at it like that. You can target um, really any age group, uh, gender, whether they're married, whether they went to college, whether they're in high school, whether they're still in college, what type of industry they're in, based on the different things they're like interested in, what pages they've liked before, what pages they haven't liked. There's a great, great opportunity as a marketer and as a business person to bring in some new traffic to, to your Facebook page and then start push, pushing that traffic elsewhere uh, through, through their Facebook experience. Um, another great way of doing this is through Facebook's uh, sponsored stories. They introduced this earlier this year. Um, I was out in San Francisco when a representative from Facebook was really starting to, to push this. And this has been a really great experience for at least uh, high, for us at High Impact Designer when we uh, started using sponsored stories. I actually wrote a blog post about how our, uh, how our click-through rate and our like rate and really a lot of just, uh, just all, those, all those great metrics started really just jumped right up once we started using Facebook sponsored stories. Uh, you, uh, you're getting what is just really a, a social, social proof from users who have liked your page and the people that are seeing this page so, and the people that see this page are um, our users, and our, our our users of Facebook as well, and also connected to that user. So, essentially, what you're getting is a testimonial. You're getting a very cheap testimonial from from someone to somebody where there's a high affinity between them. So, you have a trusted relationship and a a suggestion, so to say, from uh from someone they trust. So for instance, if I was, uh, if, and I don't always know why I always talk about Yoohoo whenever I give this example, but say for instance I went to a, the, a Yoohoo Facebook page, I really don't even know if they have one, but if I went there and I liked it, people within my feed would one, see, see that activity that I liked it, and then two, if they were running sponsored stories, they'd see a, a Justin Rondo likes, likes Yoohoo, and it would show my picture, it would show my name, they see my face, they see my name, they're curious why I like you who maybe or if God forbid they don't know what it is then I don't know why they're my friend but uh, they'd go and check the page out it really starts to point questions so say for instance if it's not an established one like you who say if it's high impact designer and it says Justin Rondo likes high impact designer maybe some of my friends uh, that I grew up with or people that I met at uh, different conferences would be curious as to what high impact designer is and why exactly do I like it so I would suggest, I definitely suggest using um, Facebook sponsored stories if you're not already, or just using Facebook ads in general. We have a very, very modest budget, and it is doing very well for us in terms of the different ways we've been taking those, that information with, uh, with forms and building new leads. Um, Facebook sponsored stories are generally uh, more expensive from what I've seen in terms of maybe about, probably about averaging 15 more cents per click. Definitely only run CPC on your ads and on your sponsored stories. Don't go into CPM. You're just going to be wasting money. Uh, they'll, either way, you're going to meet your budget, but at least with a CPC, you have, a, have some more bidding going on that's going to get you some more relevant clicks. And then social plugins are another way. I mean, if you have, a, you have traffic coming to your website, I know you don't want to move that traffic to Facebook. It's, it, for the most part, I mean, you do want to have uh, people stay on your website and then ultimately convert. But um, it's good to show that you have this this the this social this social experience 
say for instance if you have um, a catalog website where uh, you have different types of products make sure to have maybe a a like button or a share button or I think a suggest button or something like that make sure to have some type of plug in there because one the person will is is already interested in that product and will hopefully convert on that end and two if you if you maybe ha add that after or right before the checkout process where it's just a, a okay or a no um, they'll add it it'll add it into their feed and you'll still get that conversion and then you'll get some advertising on that ad and social plugins are completely free I mean Facebook loves those things um, it just shows more awareness for their you know already <laughs> I mean very very well known brand uh, so I definitely recommend social plugins as well and also I like social plugins because it has this two-way traffic from from your Facebook page to your website and keeping them kind of as a, as a complement to each other and that's really where the world's going you have to use these these pages like Facebook um, and any other social social outlet and kind of try and socialize your brand but that's not the, really the first that's not the end of the game you want to start thinking of ways to make your website far more uh, far more social and think of ways to get your customer base active another important thing uh, remember from the clear goals we have from our goals we have to have clear goals measurable goals and realistic goals so you need ways to measure and there are several different tools you can use to measure things some are free some cost money uh, and so I'll bring them all up here and I'll explain them a little bit so you have Facebook insights which are which are free uh, once you create a page you you are you're automatically opted into Facebook insights you can see what pages people are on what's their age how uh, if they're male or female how many clicks you're getting a day how many visits you're getting a day who's interacting how many people you've reached there's a lot to look at and I think if you're looking at any sort of insights metrics the uh, big things to look at are the is one that's this one's, this one's brand new it's the people talking about it's actually shown um, on your wall so it's you have your like count and then your people talking about count and if you're gonna care about any of those two numbers your like count I'd say is far more of a vanity metric that you don't have to worry about and you would want to look more at getting people interactive and getting a higher people talking about count. Edge rank checker is, a, is another great uh, another great tool. The Facebook edge rank is an algorithm that uh, dictates when your posts get shown. So, and that's based off of really three factors. It's based off of the affinity of you of your company and your followers, the uh, the type, the weight of the content, whether it's just text, images, videos, and one one big tip right there is to mix up. Don't just have text comments or link comments. Don't turn your Facebook page into just you know a blog or a, a, a place to post your links to your blog posts. Mix up content. Videos get by far the most impressions, followed by photos. So, but it really does just require you to have a uh, have it just be a variety, and that's taken into your edge rank as well. And then also the timeliness of things. So if you're posting daily, uh, that's going to help you a little bit better. I mean, you have better times in the day, and that just comes from testing. Um, there's a, a company called Crowd Booster, which you can do for you can use for automating your posts, and this is both on Twitter and Facebook. So this is a pretty pretty cool tool uh, that also shows your influential followers. And influence is really the wild west right now of social media, um, and you'll probably be hearing a lot about that later on um, down the road and that's a really cool tool it's free for up to three account up to three different accounts that you can monitor but it has been a bit buggy lately so I'd be a little weary about that 20 feet uh, is like crowd booster but gives you a lot more information and has some really great graphs so I would definitely recommend them if you're looking for another possible uh, possible uh, outlet for uh, analyzing your page uh, social Bakers is pretty much the premier for social statistics. Uh, if you're looking for market penetration or different stats on uh, like what country has how many users, what's the top pages there, what are the users doing, um, what's the growth rate, uh, definitely check them out. That all the information is free, uh, but and um, it, but there are some different 
different metrics that will start costing you money. And that's the case for all of these except Facebook Insights. They're all free to a point. And so Unilizer is just a straight metrics tool that will give you um, some great charts, pretty colorful, and um, really um, nail down some of your social experience. And one thing I really want to stress is to be careful with third-party tools. In a study by EdgeRank Checker, which was one of the tools we talked about at the end, um, if you're using a third-party tool, it will actually decrease your engagement rate uh, by around 80%. And Facebook claimed this to be a bug, but I don't see it as being too much of a, of a bug for one reason, that if you're using a third-party tool, you're not seeing Facebook ads. So it's not profitable for Facebook to have people automating their posts and posting from uh, from a different tool and not seeing the advertisements that companies are paying for. That'll uh, that might decrease their the the worth of their advertisements. But Facebook also did increase their revenue uh, twofold by uh, by the six month point this year from last year. So I don't think they're too worried about that. Uh, but just do keep that in mind. I tested it on our own end and. Our impression rates and our engagement ranks dropped very, very low when we ran it through um, a third-party tool. So in general, third-party tools are great for analyzing, but not for engaging. So you definitely want to engage people um, while logged into Facebook and really well logged into Facebook only. And I guess really one of my, one of my last, uh, last tips is just remember to, to have fun and engage your fans. Um, these people have taken the time to like your page. I mean, with all these different um, worries that people have, like they're worried that you're they're going to get spammed by you, um, that they don't want any, they don't want you to get compliance information in their profile, and there's a lot of a lot of worry about privacy. And so, make sure to give your fans a reason not to be so worried about that, and really just engage them and be, be a bit lighthearted. If I was to say anything about Facebook for a business. It's really just business casual. Um, don't go too don't go too light though, because I've seen some some really big Facebook faux pas uh, from people taking it a little too lightly. Uh, a few things I just wanted to point out again: if you're designing a page or um, doing anything on your Facebook page, users. This is based on an exact target study back in October. Um, Users are expecting to gain access to exclusive content, events, or sales. So that is, and that's 58% of people are looking for that. So when you're creating your content, you definitely want to fan gate, like I said earlier. That's, that's a must. If you're not doing any sort of fan gating, um, you're really not enticing people to, to like your page whatsoever. Um, and so on top of uh, getting exclusive content, People are also looking for discounts or promotions, and that's another 58% of the, the study group that was looking for that. And th then 47% of people wanted to receive updates from the company, person, or organization in, in their newsfeed. So people are looking to engage with your companies. Um, they're looking for, looking for promotions, looking for ex something exclusive. And social media is about being exclusive. People want to feel like they're a part of something. So you want to take it's, I guess it's not as much exclusive as it is. You want to include everyone, yet make them feel like it, it is exclusive. So um, that would probably be one of the bigger takeaways is that you just want to involve, involve your, your customer base. Let them, let them in and just really, uh, uh, just really engage them on that end. So in this, this image right here was done by uh, a friend of mine uh, named, named Duncan, uh, and it's the, the corporate mullet business in the front and party in the back and you'll look at you'll have your website and your and your emails and your microsites and your surveys those are really a lot of stuff that are on the business side of things with your case studies and press rooms and we start going down into the party side of the mullet and you start seeing things like social networks facebook widgets twitter blogs games and then at the end complete complete anarchy with party time so just remember that facebook's a bit more lighthearted and just keep the corporate mullet in mind when you're uh designing your, your Facebook page. And that's it. And again, I'm Justin with uh, High Impact Designer. Check out our blog or, or our website and uh, email me if you want some more information or a deal on our, our latest tools. So I also wanted to plug one more, uh, one more thing, and that's my uh, I'll be at Affiliate Summit West. And it, as you saw, you, get a, you do get a discount to that for attending 
this this webinar today. I'll be talking about some more social tips. There's a lot of new new data coming out. I'm kind of doing some tests right now, and I really want to share it with anybody out there. Um, I'm a lot more a lot more animated in person. I can promise you that since you can't see me and you just saw a big a, a big slideshow today. So I hope to see everybody here out there. And again, thank you for coming and uh, spending your time with me today. I was really happy to see this turnout and. Um, Mary, thanks for having me. Affiliate Summit, thanks for having me here. And have a great day. Oh, and before I close out, actually, let me answer some more questions in here. And uh, if you have any, any further questions, just start asking them now. So Aaron had asked me if uh, I... If I Yeah, Aaron asked me to name a few uh, a few faux pas, and so I will name some some major ones that I've seen before. And to get my and to email me before I do that, it's Justin at highimpactdesigner.com. I'm going to send this in the questions to everybody. Oh, and Aaron, I just sent it to you by accident. But to name some faux pas I've seen, I think one is having a social media team, or if you're if you're if you hire somebody to your social media tactics, make sure they know the the vision of your company or the mission of your company. Um, because there were some issues with, uh, I believe it was Canon, they did some status updates where it wasn't that great for um, for photographers to hear. I think they had said it doesn't matter who the photographer is, it's, it's really a matter of the lens, and they had a huge backlash from that. You want to definitely use your, um, use your social media to kind of draw some controversy, but if you end up in, in a hairy situation, um, you're going to have to really uh, do some damage control and do it fast because it can grow very quickly. Another like faux pas I see when people are just creating a page and not, um, and so this isn't a disaster control thing, it's really more of a when you're designing and creating. It's um, one, not setting your default landing page, which you can do in your in your edit page area. Another one, is not actually utilizing the, the full space for your for your profile picture. Um, think of your profile picture as almost a, a banner ad. You have uh, make don't make it as ad like, but think of it as that's the persisting uh, that's the one persisting part of your Facebook page. It's not going to be changing unless you change it. So you have all the control within that within that much real estate. Let me um, let me actually go back to the slide showing you how much real estate you actually have with that. All right. Let's go here. And so you have 180 pixels by 540. That's huge. And that's not going to change. If I was to um, give you any advice on when you're creating this, it's, I guess, a couple things. Have your logo in there, but don't make that be like really the central piece. People love to see faces. So I've seen people do, um, do like fan of the month or fan of the week and put a picture there. Um, if people are visiting, your page, they're hitting your wall. So if you've added new tabs, people might not know it. Or if you have a new, um, if you have a new deal, people aren't going to know about it that well. So have a, like an arrow at the bottom that says "Check out our new deal" and point down and have that be the uh, the tab that it's pointing at, so people can go there and find it. Um, I think another big faux pas is that people. I've seen some companies that actually don't allow people to post on their wall, and that's just really antithetical to social media in general. So you definitely want to have people that you want to give people the, the means to interact with your page. I, any page I see that doesn't allow that, um, I'm a little weary about, especially if they're not really an established brand. Um, and if you are going to have fans interact, if you're worried about what people are going to say, have a terms and conditions tab set up or something in your information that says what you will tolerate on there and what won't be tolerated. So you can have uh, justification for if somebody gets banned or if somebody gets uh, if their posts get deleted. Um, so those can cause uh, some major issues. And I'd say would pro probably be some of the bigger Facebook faux pas that are out there. And Tim, Tim had asked, how do you create a landing page on Facebook? So on Facebook, what you do is there's different applications for creating tabs. You can go through Facebook developers yourself, um, but you can also use some tools out there. I obviously am uh, suggest my my company's tool, uh, Social Page Builder, um, which is at highimpactdesigner.com. 
and I recommend using that so you can create it and then publish it. And then to set a default tab, um, we have a video on our website, uh, actually on our Vimeo page, and um, if you would like to see that, I can toss that in here really quickly. Oops. Let me get our Vimeo page account here. Um, change name. Oh, come on. And I'll put it out in the questions for everybody to see. This is just, um, and Tim, I'm just responding to you with this. Sorry. Send to all. So if any, everybody sees the response in Tim's, that's where you go for a few I'll just put it in the chat to all. All right. And then, Sarkis, I sent my email out there. Uh, and Tim, yes, we do have um, fan gated capabilities with our with our reveal page wizard. All right. Um, are there any other questions here today? All right. All right. That's great, Justin. That was a great webinar. Um, Thank you. Any? I don't see any other questions popping up. So, do you have anything else you would like to provide for the webinar? Um, no, let me just just remember everybody. Um, I'll put my chat and my email in the chat again, and email me, and I will give you a coupon for our social page building tool, so you can start creating a a Facebook page, a, a tab for your Facebook page, and start increasing your fan count, and then really start turning those into leads. Perfect. Well, thank you, Justin. That was a great webinar. It was very informative. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. <laughs> Have a good day. Yep, you too. Bye.